uh, I will be talking about uh, folk healing in India and uh, I will be primarily talking about what folk, what, what folk healing is, its relevance and its efficacy in dealing with a wide range of health and other psychosocial problems. India has a long history, a very rich history of developing a wide variety of healing practices, theories for dealing with both mental and physical health problems. In fact, if you look at the country, you know each, each in different parts of the country, in each nook and corner of the country, you can find these healing centers and these healers who are trying to providing all kind of health services and other, other kind of dealing with other kind of problems. Keeping that in mind, Sudhir Kakkar in 1982 in his very famous book, Shaman Mystics and Doctors, he has commented that the diversity of these traditions in India and the astonishing variety and number of practitioners can make a stranger to this country feel that healing in its manifold aspects is a central individual and cultural concern and preoccupation and impression which is not far off from the mark. That is what he wrote in 1982 that India is in that sense that if you look in terms of the the, the temples, the, the, the mosque, the other kind of healing centers and you look in terms of the, the healers, the shamans, the mystics, the even the fortune tellers, the gurus and other kind of people who are providing these kind of services. There is a whole range of services and the wide range of services which we can see uh, being practiced in different parts of the country. And if you look at the, the, the fifth five way plan of uh, 1992, which clearly states that India has around half million uh, healers in the country and by these healers the planning commission document means those who are practicing Ayurveda, homeopathy and other, other, other alternative systems of medicine. And if we add to this list those who are practicing other kind of faith healers, fortune tellers, we, the gurus and all these different kind of varieties of uh, healers then the whole number may go even beyond the 1 million uh, mark. And keeping in that in mind that uh, a kind of surveys which are conducted in this country and these surveys clearly show that more than 90, 95 percent of the population believes in the efficacy of these healing practices. In fact, uh, in 1990, uh, in, in 2000, Nanda wrote a book and he, she, she mentioned that they are around 2.5 uh, lakhs of healing uh, religious and other centers in this country and large number of these double up as healing centers. And even the, this magnitude and this massive uh, system which is available in this country for years and for centuries, uh, we can say that we this particular system has been ignored by the scientists, by psychologists. By, by health practitioners and I think uh, this is the time for us to understand and uh, its implication is, is, a, is a use and its relevance for dealing with the health problems in this country. Before I proceed further, uh, let me tell that there are two types of traditions we can talk about and these two type of traditions what Marriott calls as the little and the great tradition. And by great tradition, what, what we in terms of the healing we can mean those uh, practices which are like Ayurveda, homeopathy, other kind of practices which are, has a formal system of practicing where, where there are texts and books available which are being uh, used and uh, used for the purpose of understanding and uh, learning about these, uh, these theories. And they are institutions learning institutions, training institutions for these uh, different kind of uh, practices. But if you are there are other tradition which we call is what he calls as a little tradition and what I mean by that is the folk tradition. Folk tradition is 
that tradition in which we deals with the common man, people in the street, people in the villages, people in different walks of life, where we which uh, uh, and these are the practices where which develop grew uh, from the local conditions, from the local local uh, uh, local uh, environment, local experiences, and which uh, had a developmental or we will say uh, developmental growth uh, in the in the sense that these were modif developed, modified, went some kind of uh, changes. And uh, looking at the long history of India, these traditions have survived uh, over the centuries. And they have not only survived, but these are still as popular, and they are getting or even they are gaining in popularity or in all over in all different parts of countries. Uh, last year, I went to a healing center which is in Rajasthan near Chittor. And uh, when I visited it last time, almost 20 years back, it was a small temple. And what I found in, in 20 years time that around that particular temple, a whole township has developed. And the, the, the more people who are visiting these places is the increase to a great extent. So, in spite of all the progress which medical science has made, in spite of all the discoveries about the medicine, about the pharmaceutical companies and other uh, medical development, the popularity of these centers have not gone down. If you look from that point of view, then I think uh, it is important that the kind of services they are providing, uh, there is something uh, which uh, people are people are approaching, people are contacting and people they are they, they are close to the culture and the belief system which people have. Looking from that point of view, I would like to make a point that uh, medical science, particularly the modern medicine has uh, not accepted these practices or they have not uh, uh, recognized or or attribute these practices in the sense that these practices are considered to be be scientific, they are considered to be primitive and these practices have been considered that those, those people are uneducated, ignorant, tribal and these people are using these kind of practices. But the data shows as uh, many other uh, surveys show that these centers these healing centers, no, may, no matter where they are, and they are in a large number in all cities and villages and places, have been frequented by people from all different uh, class sections of the society, whether they are rich or poor, whether they are educated or not educated, whether they are experts or not experts. Even these have been found in the surveys that even the uh, medical doctors, even the families of these doctors even if they may be visiting at times different times of these different centers. So, these places if I look at these the practices have been utilized and have been uh, subscribed by the large population of the country. Now, if you look at from, uh, from that point of view, in spite of their popularity and wider practices, the larger scientific community and modern medicine has not recognized or remain critical even the of these uh, different practices and the um, these are traditional practices and it has been alleged and it has been believed that only those who are uneducated ignorant or or uh, tribal or have no access to medical practices these are the people who subscribe to this kind of healing practices, this kind of traditional health practices. They are pre-scientific, they are uh, part of the superstition which people have and unless uh, the, the education will bring them you know uh, out of the, that kind of belief system which give, which give them to. But you look at the Kakkar and the work which very important work which was done by Kakkar and Kleinman. So, and Sudhir Kakke and the Klein, Arthur Kleinman who have done the work in the Arthur Kleinman has worked in the Asian region and there in that region he has been was, was looking at the, these traditions and he said these practices are deeply intent not on, intent in the conventional one thing one is intent in the conventional wisdom 
these practices are not unscientific in the sense that we and we understand it because what we have failed to understand is the scientific import of these different kind of healing pra healing practices and i think uh, we what we need to do uh, as a scientist is to decipher what kind of uh, theories about human mind theories about the human nature and the theories about the human behavior and social practices are intrinsic in this uh, are part of and these uh, healing practices are based on these kind of uh, systems and i think uh, that needs a a kind of a change in our methodology because we do not have right now the methodology and the mindset to understand this rich heritage before i proceed further uh, i would like to make uh, three points in this case and that uh, uh, and the, when I, before i talk about the how these healing centers are distinguished from the other kind of services i would like to make three points and the first point is that who made a very uh, significant point in their annual report in the, uh, the 1998 report that 80% of the diseases we suffer from the medical the physical diseases we suffer from either have a psychogenic or a self limiting nature by saying psychogenic or self limiting nature what who report says that in the case of 80% of diseases we suffer from does not need any kind of medical treatment in whether we treat we may go for any treatment or not diseases will be going away in the in the for in the for after a particular period of time so the question is that in 80% of cases we go to rush to the doctor and get the medicine is the actually not required any person with a simple assurance and saying that everything will be all right may be enough for the patient to recover from that kind of problem another point we i want to make in this context is that those uh, people who visit the traditional healers they are not uh, the, the the people who visit, they understand that what healer can do and what a doctor can do they understand their different rules and they understand their different rules in the sense that when they go to a medical doctor they only talk in terms of the physical symptom symptoms of the problem but when they go to a healer they talk about all their personal concerns and issues and problems and uh, uh, what they are suffering from because human suffering is not only contingent on the physical condition but also kind of way they construe their problem and they understand their personal and so mental and social problems and the, so the role which a healer is playing is more of a counselor than of a person who is treating their physical disease the third point i want to make that in the context in this context is that when we are looking at this healing tradition in the present context we should know that there is a lot of discontentment at present in the west also about the medical health practices because uh, there was a lot of hope in the beginning of the last century that there will be a, that the medical science will progress to the extent when there will be a pill for every illness every disease will be taken care of whether it is a mental disease or the or the or physical disease and we have come to know in 100 years of medical science progress that medical science has not been able to address most of the human physical and mental health problems looking at uh, the way mental health problems are increasing in the societies whether this is in the, in the indian society or the western societies the 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 number of the problem is on rise look at different kind of indices which are coming out in terms of suicide in terms of depression in terms of uh, other kind of uh, anger and other kind of mental health problems these problems are on rise according to all different statistics which are coming up so medical science has not been able to address very effectively to this kind of physical and mental health problems of the people and if keeping that in mind that uh, this is a kind of scenario we are living today i think there it becomes more pertinent for us to understand this how these different healing centers and these healers work what they do and what they do 
and how that helps the person to recover from the kind of problem they are suffering from. So, what I am going to talk now about now is about the distinguishing features of these faith healing, this kind of traditional healing or I would say call it whether we call it faith healing or folk healing or traditional healing, I would be combining these different aspects. One aspect is that these healing folk healing is holistic in nature. It is much more than the recovery of the person from illness or from physical or mental health problems, but it is dealing with the anxieties, worries, fears, guilt, loneliness, all these are kind of problems which are accompanying with this kind of other kind of health problems or personal or social problems. This holistic view means this the overall purpose of these, uh, this kind of folk healing is the social and psychological and physical well being of the person. That is the primary concern and looking at from that point of view holistic healing is considered to be uh, dealing with uh, human relations, dealing with the belief system, dealing with the patients and their spiritual orientation and all these things are combined. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the treatment process or in the healing, healing process uh, in these traditional practices. Now, these traditional healers know one thing intuitively, maybe not uh, because of their learning or education, that there is a close symbiotic relationship between mind and body. If the mind is, if the mind is sick, the person falls sick mentally as well in the due course of time, he is mentally also sick. And in any mental illness, anxiety or depression or other kind of will lead to some kind of may lead to some kind of physical symptoms at some other stage. So, this kind of close relationship between mind and body, uh, healers when they understand what they are doing, the kind of treatment which they are doing is primarily in one way is of. Uh, um, psychological nature that if the mind is treated, mind is healed, then the mind will heal as mind as a mind will take care of the body, the physical illness as, as well. So, this kind of assurance, this kind of faith, this kind of belief which is invoked uh, in the in these kind of healing practices that becomes important for understanding that uh, that uh, these are psychological conditions, the state, state of mind of the person is important for the purpose of uh, healing and treatment of the person. Another thing which I want to say about the, this holistic one is that the, the traditional healing is not treating the person as a patient, it is not looking at the illness or the problem which the person has. The treatment which they have or the healing which they takes place is of the person. So, what they are healing is the person not, not, not like in medical science where the focus is on the illness and the symptoms and its removal. Another thing which I want to say in this is in this con con context that though some healers specialize in particular aspects of, of in particular diseases or particular kind of problems, but the kind of treatment which they generally they what they do is combining the medicine, herbal, faith, belief, spirituality, all these are combined together when they, the, 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 the whether when they are dealing with the people who are suffering from some other kind of problems. And uh, sometimes that, so this is one of the aspect that these processes or these healings are healing holistic. Another is that these therapies are mostly healing traditional therapies are mostly sacred, uh, sacred therapies. What I mean by, by sacred therapies, uh, I am making a distinction between the sacred and the religious. Religious is a connotation which is bound within a particular uh, framework, within a particular belief system or within a particular social or way of and believing and understanding by a particular community, particular society and group. But why is, when I say sacred these places, we mean to say that these places are the places which sacred means uh, they are considered to be holy. 
they are considered to be uh, belonging to a realm in that realm uh, which is revered or respected or, or trusted or believed and th th this is about way how we look at the, the whole aspect of sacred. And what Sudhi Kakkar again said, I would say, I will quote Sudhi Kakkar in this context is that, he said that the whole weight of the community's religion, myth, history enters sacred therapy, as the therapist proceeds to mobilize strong psychic energies inside, inside and outside the patient. This and this sacred may be involved in many ways, whether by the images of God or Lord Bhagavan or or some kind of other Majar places, some kind of holy man. And through this, uh, this, 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 the, the, what he is trying to do in, the, in these healing practices is that, they are trying to bring together the physical and the metaphysical world. And these world when they are brought together, that the whole endeavor is to bring a harmony. Uh, because we, as we say that, uh, we, we, these are not two separate worlds, but we live as an individual, we live in both the worlds, the physical and the metaphysical. And the healing, folk healing practices are trying to harmonize these two worlds within which we live. Now, these sacred practices, practices are reinforced, many times these sacred practices are reinforced by legends or by uh, some kind of stories, uh, this kind of stories or this kind of myth, which are built around these, these healing places. All healing places, which I have, I have, we have been studying a large number of these healing places, have a some story how it did begin, how it came into existence, how a particular healer has acquired the power of power, uh, the, the power to heal somebody. And uh, there are stories about, like, about that particular temple or that particular type of uh, other kind of healing centers that there may be some, for example, there was a place uh, close to Allahabad and they said that some cow was passing from that area and uh, when she which scratched the land from her leg, some idol came out and they thought it was something miracle which happened. And uh, that was maybe miracle or not miracle, I do not know, but at least this is how the people believe that, that uh, this particular idol is a miracle. And they put in, in a temple, small temple and that becomes a healing center in that particular area, which is frequented by a large number of people. They are always associated uh, some kind of rituals or other kind of rituals, which are part of that uh, sacred heal, healing therapies. And they are part of the healing in the, in the sense that, that uh, they are they either in there is a temple somewhere close to uh, uh, Udaipur, which I visited that people are supposed to, to, to enter in that temple crawling. And this is how they see that uh, some, or some other kind of rituals, they have to enter the temple folded hand. They have to do some kind of rituals and then they can get into that uh, uh, holy place. And this is one of the, you know, they ensure that the kind of reverence and the kind of uh, faith and the belief which people have should be, should be maintained. I saw in one place where I went to uh, this healing center. And I found that they maintain the register of all those people who have visited this place. I thought it is very, very systematic and the good way of you know keeping a record who are coming and visiting these places. There was a healing center which was famous for the for the purpose of you know strokes and um, uh, epilepsy and all these kind of diseases. And uh, in that register, when I saw that particular register, I found that there was hardly any case of a person who came to this place and has not recovered, has not benefited. So, all these records show that the, the, the list of and the, the names and addresses and problem which they are suffering of those people who have recovered. The whole purpose that which I could understand later on is that the purpose of looking and maintaining these record is to ensure or to, un, to ensure that this is a place which is really effective in one way. I am sure there may be people who are going to visiting these places who have not benefited. But uh, all these reasons and stories which they can tell about these places, all these stories are stories of those stories which are stories of healing, stories of the recovering and again coming back to the health. 
the recovery may be marginal, the recovery may be uh, may be in very only may be perceptible only those who are seeing it, but that kind of recovery was uh, you know observed and seen these places. So, this is another thing which I found that these uh, the kind of sacredness the holiness of these places has been maintained and that is becomes whether it is a healer or is a healing page that sacredness is in very important consideration. The third was cultural compatibility. What I mean if you look at the medical practices, medical science and that medical practice and the medical doctor is coming with a particular type of education, particular kind of background, there is a, there is a belief of the in the belief in the uh, in the kind of some kind of mal practice, mal uh, functioning of the body, some kind of virus which is affecting the our health and because of that we are falling sick. So, all kind of in, all kind of explanations all kind of causality which is given by the medical doctor is in terms of the uh, uh, some kind of virus or some kind of bodily malfunctioning and these were the considered which are considered. But if you look at uh, and these are the doctors who come from a particular section of the society, they are educated, they are coming from the uh, uh, educated and they speak a different language, they are taught and brought up and, and trained in a different way uh, environment. But when you look at these healers, all these healers, most most of them come from the same region. They belong to the same community. They speak the same language. They know the families to whom they are treating. They have a long association with the people in that particular region and area. They they know what kind of problems people suffer in that particular area. So if you look at the and then you look in the terms of the belief system also, the what they believe in their health beliefs, in terms of health beliefs, their cultural beliefs, in terms of their cultural practices, they come from the same background to which the patient or people or those who are suffering belong to. So, there is a kind of compatibility, there is a kind of uh, you know we can see the continuity in what they speak, the, the language they speak, the, the way they understand the problem and the way the patient understand the problem, because they also have the faith and trust and subscribe to the same kind of value system and the same kind of social and cultural practices. And that is one of the factor through because of which these healers are very very quickly can uh, can uh, can communicate and they can they link or they can uh, have a bond uh, with these healers. So, that kind of bond which is uh, which is established between the traditional healer and the patient, we do not see that kind of bond in elsewhere, not very generally frequently, particularly in those hospitals and the, those places where there are hundreds of patients which the, the doctor has to see and it is not physically possible for him to you know, know personally all the patients the doctor is treating. But here these people are personally known, they subscribe to the same value system and they come from, from the same kind of background. And another thing is that they, the way they interpret their disease, when they look at the way these patients and the, the healers interpret their diseases, they do not dis, dis, interpret the disease in terms of the medical uh, symptoms or in terms of physical symptoms. But most of these kind of these these uh, interpretations are in terms of some kind of a some kind of a moral transgression may be one that they went somewhere and they violated you know they they should have moved before the holy people tree and they did not do it or they passed from some places where they should not have gone or where there are some kind of you know evil spirits reside. So, most of these uh, kind of uh, belief which people have that these are the primary source of disease is the these the kind of evil spirits or kind of a you know some kind of moral or log or ethical transgression. And that is one of the thing which is also taken into consideration that these are the reasons for which people fall sick. The third thing which I can say uh, fourth third or fourth in this context is that the kind of uh, treatment which goes at these places I would call it a kind of a community treatment. It is not like a one to one treatment or one to one uh, consultation, consultation which goes on in the case of a 
clinical practices, psychotherapists will talk to the patient and then maybe I talk to other people from the family or from other people, but the whole consultation is one, one to one. In the medical practices also he is more concerned about talking to the patient and uh, here I have seen some of the places I went, went and stayed there what is actually happening and uh, it is an open space. So, all these patients and all these people who are want to consult a healer will go and assemble there and they talk about their problem openly before everybody. There is no sense of privacy, there is no sense of hiding or doing something. They talk about the, what they are suffering from and what they think is the cause of the suffering and they think about it as the kind of background which they have and the healer is talking he is giving some kind of sessions, he is talking. So, all these sessions which go on at these uh, different places, these are the sessions where you know uh, everybody knows about, about the problem of everybody. There is nothing like a question of privacy and secrecy. Another thing is that uh, these places everybody is participating in the treatment process, the whole community and people is involved in that process of participation. So, there is a larger role for the community, for the family to participate. And that becomes important that the person when he is sick that what actually happens and medical many studies one that the people are sick, they their domain of their world shrink, shrinks, they get more and more confined to themselves. And the what these kind of healing practices are doing that they are bringing other person out out back into the society, out back into the community and field family. So, that even who has become individual in this in the sense of the term has become again a social being, an active and, and a social participant in the community life in the village or in the community. This is another thing and one thing which uh, we noticed uh, during this period that what these healers do? They create a positive image of well-being. This is one of the things which they do is that positive image of the well-being in the sense that they create that kind of ambience at these healing places, centers or at the place of uh, where they are uh, doing this treatment that by using uh, different kind of uh, what we call the uh, essence or kind of a chanting or bhajans or other kind of you know activities uh, some kind of even group dancing and sometimes there are drumming all kind of activities which go at different places. These activities are, con are conducted in the sense that person should have that kind of sense of well being that he is part of a larger community not only part of the larger community, but they by through these methods these different ways they come create a kind of imagery in the mind of the person that everything is going to be all right. Their anxieties and their worries you know may be taken care of. So, this sense of well being which is inculcated in this patient through different kind of rituals and different kind of practices that becomes very important that the rituals and practices you know only they facilitate the process of bringing the person hope one is very important that I am going to be all right. This hope is very important for recovery from any kind of problem, any kind of mental or physical health problem. Another is the faith that the kind of place I have come, I have come to the right place and I think this place is going to or this person is going to help me in recovering. And that kind of ambience and that kind of uh, imagery that everything is going to be all right, uh, things will recover and improve. Uh, People come with uh, go with these places or inculcate of uh, this kind of uh, mental state when they visit these places and which is very important for recovering from any kind of problem is very important that you have hope and you trust people around you and you think what is whatever be being done will be of help in um, improving this condition. Another thing which in, the, in this case is we, we say that this is a treatment only not only for the patient this is not they are not healing the person they are also tending the doing the treatment for the family and the larger community. And that is important that uh, everybody is participating in this process. I have been working uh, we are doing we are doing some work in the villages of uh, in 
near Allahabad. And one of the problem which is really very prevalent in this case mental health problem is the hysteria. Lot of women in that area suffer from hysteria. And we went to see that how people, how these uh, healing centers treat people, uh, women who are suffering from hysteria, because this is a morally predominantly problem for the women and for particularly for the younger, younger women. And we saw that the family is a joint family, we most of the cases we, what we find that some cases which we saw that those who are coming from the joint family, big family there and there is a new bride in the family. What happens that that new bride has to follow the conventions, the tradition, the orders, the expectations as to meet of the whole all family members. Anybody can tell her anything, anybody can even harass her, abuse her and she is not supposed to talk react and give it back in a very traditional society. If you think about the very other kind of uh, agrarian and very uh, village and traditional society and what is happening in that case, her whole anger is accumulating over a long period of time. She wants to react and she is not able to react and, and what happens, happens that when she is not no longer can take it in that situation there is a burst she becomes hysterical and when she becomes hysterical she can do anything. She can throw a stone at the family members, she can be abuse them, she can run away, she can do all kind of things she can do and it is not taken offence. Why? Because it is believed that it is that when she, she gets hysterical it is believed that she is possessed by some kind of evil spirit. If she is doing under the under the under the under the uh, that spell of that evil spirit, then it is not she is do, who is doing it. So, nobody takes on any of it, she can do anything and her catharsis has taken place. Whatever she wants to say, whatever she wants to do, she is able to do it and nobody takes any offence of it. She is taken to these healing centres, because if there is evil spirit, it has to be driven away and uh, all kind of treatment they do there, you know and, and because of that, that the kind of even the, the kind of uh, uh, the jar funk to some kind of beating also in some which takes place in some places I have seen it and uh, kind of you know shouting and crown kind of uh, kind of that just to just to drive away that particular spirit. If once that spirit is driven away and the person patient person she is normal, then there is no stigma of it. She is again back to the family, she is working in the family, and but what happens that the whole family is participating in this process and there is a fear that this spirit, evil spirit may come back any time. So, now they are treating that bride more humanly, more with a concern and they are more careful that uh, she should be you know her well being should be taken care of. I think if you look at from that point of view that we may, may call it superstition, if you look up from that point of view that it is serving a purpose and there is no stigma. No stigma is said that, that even if a person is gone to mental hospital for, for just a visit, he visits a psychiatrist even for few, few occasions, then that person carries that stigma for the rest of the life that he person has a mental health problem, he visited some kind of a psychiatric or counselling centre. And that kind of stigma is not there. I know one thing which I have seen even with this kind of family treatment that they or the healing that there may be many places there are distortions, there are abuses and they kind of things which happen, which I have seen that mostly these are highlighted by the medical doctors and medical practitioners and those who are educated, they, these are exaggerated in many ways. They are happening, yes this kind of malpractices are there, but these are more exaggerated by the by the educated class, because they are not able to understand what is happening. They only see that and, and this they are this kind of distortions and this kind of abuses are there, yes. But if you look at the even the medical science, if you look at the other kind of treatment process, these are everywhere. Even the American data shows that the 40 percent of the surgery which are conducted, we have done on the patient was not required at all and these surgeries take place. In the large number of cases where a patient does not need a medicine or overdose of medicine, 
these are being given by the doctors. So, that they are quacks uh, in this system also in the four killing system they are quacks, they are cheats, they are people who are there for different purposes, but still that system you know if you look in the larger context and you look under understand what they are doing actually when they are doing a kind of a proper treatment there is a, is a kind of a psychological and social and spiritual component which is part of it. Who are these healers and how does it work? And I would I think I will devote, I would like to devote some time to this particular aspect that how these healers work. As I said one thing is that uh, these uh, healers belong to the same community, they come from the same community. So, there is a greater faith, there is a greater trust and there is a greater communication uh, with the people with this kind of healers by healers within that particular community. Now, one point which I want to make in this context is that there are healers are supposed to have some kind of a the healing powers and these healing powers are not acquired by practice or by training or by, but these powers are bestowed on them are given, are given to them for the purpose of helping the community, helping the people and helping the society. So, in most of the cases if you look at this healing system and uh, I think I have seen this, this healing system even is a whole over the world that uh, these in, in these healing systems healing is a kind of a social work is not a profession. They may be doing uh, some other things, they may be doing some other kind of activity for their livelihood and their living, but they it is not their, their means of living and means of their the uh, earning and in that sense if it is not earning that is kind of social work if you look from the them most of these healers are doing some other kind of work which we have seen. But many of these healers and these healers are on their own kind of offer these services and not only offer these services these services you know are acknowledged and accepted by the community as a kind of a you know a, a kind of contribution to the society. Another thing which I see in the in this case is that though people are not paying directly it is not like a medical system that you pay 50 rupees or 100 rupees that to fee to a doctor and go and get treatment. These healers are not supposed to charge. In fact, this is from I have been reading a 15 to 20 other articles from other places from other regions for America or even the, the, the natives of that particular place or tribal communities in different places or aboriginal people that this practice is everywhere that these healers are not supposed to charge. If they charge any money for what they are doing then it is believed that their healing powers will be gone. So, this is a kind of service which is kind of free service. This is not a part of the commercial setup. Uh, if you look at from traditional point of view, it is happening now. I can we can see it that it is becoming more and more commercial and and uh, and uh, in that. But it traditionally it was never anywhere in the world. This that this is a kind of a service they are providing voluntarily. But it was not that uh, these people were not compensated for what they were for what they were doing. Society was taking many times the local communities were taking care of their needs. The what will happen the person when the person gets well, get feels treated or family feels treated, they feel obliged to offer some kind of a you know some kind of offering in terms of material or in terms of in the terms of uh, in terms of some items or gifts or some kind of you know uh, some grains or some kind of other things for the livelihood. So, this kind of uh, offering in terms of offering in terms of a, as a as a sense of uh, gratitude people were doing, but they were not supposed to charge. And I think uh, that was important aspect of this uh, that uh, uh, these were supposed to be voluntary services. Another thing uh, I would like to make in say in this case in this sense is that these healers do not make a any distinction as I also mentioned in the beginning of different kind of problems. Whether this is a social problem, there is a problem where somebody has uh, got be, uh, has uh, lost his family member 
or some other kind of tragedy has happened in the fam family or somebody has lost his business or somebody has another kind of you know social or kind of personal problem or physical problem or mental problem. The what is happening that uh, the healer which, which are working, traditional healer who are working, do not make this kind of clear distinction between one, 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 one this depending on the symptoms and the kind of the, this problem is different from the other kind of problem. The kind of treatment which happens, uh, which is uh, which which is which uh, taking place in these places, is almost uniform for all these kind of different kind of problems. So what because I said I said in the beginning that the healer is treating the person, not the problem. He is dealing with the person and he is dealing in a more in a holistic manner in the sense that the holistic, holistic manner in the sense that, that uh, all problems have some kind of uh, have may result into some kind of physical or the mental health problems. Even when there is a loss in the business, it may happen eventually that that may lead to some kind of a mental health or some kind of depression or some kind of other kind of problem. So, that kind of discrimination or this kind of uh, classification which we make in the modern uh, medical practices, that kind of classification, that kind of differentiation has not been very much uh, practiced by these people. I said in the beginning there may be guru, peer, diviner, there may be shamans, there may be uh, jarfung person, there may be some kind of fortune teller there may be other kind of all these whole range of uh, healers and I am talking what I am talking about is that uh, which are being there and who are providing these kind of services, healing services to the community. And I think uh, this is important that uh, what we our heritage we have, the what kind of uh, rich tradition we have and what kind of uh, uh, experience we have that can should be brought into the health care programs of the country. Because looking at the present scenario and looking at that we do not have sufficient doctors in the country, we do not have the infrastructure for health care at present. I think uh, these people who are providing a service in any case and these people who are acknowledged and uh, accepted by a larger uh, section of the society, how these people can be brought within the realm of the public health care system. I think this is one of the issue which is a primary issue. For the purpose that there are many studies which are even done in the West, and Wimpold was one of the person who wrote a very f famous book. He did a survey of a large number of psychotherapists and their practices, and he was trying to understand what helps person to recover or to to gain his uh, mental health again, restore his mental health. And he found that he took the their practices like whether what kind of system, what kind of uh, a particular they subscribe to and in what kind of environment they talk about, they, they take also took the person and what he found important uh, in that most of the larger chunk of variance was accounted by uh, the psychotherapist as a person, not his practices or not his techniques or not uh, what he was doing. But as a person, how psychotherapist as a person is able to relate with the patient. What goes on in the, in the communication with the patient at the conscious and both at the unconscious level. How that person, how the psychologist be able to give him that feeling of trust and hope that he is well, he's going to recover or she is going to recover. And that is what he found in the, the book which has come out in 2001 that clearly is about the, that the person as a therapist is much more important than the techniques which they use. And if you look at from look uh, from that point of view also and also we look at the point of view that most of the treatment in the, in the larger cases that these people are doing, traditional healers are doing is providing a kind of psychological assurance, a kind of hope that things are going to be all right. These are the people with whom they can communicate in a close quarter, you know they are available all the time, they are there and they can go and consult them, which is not possible, which is not happening in the, uh, the modern present setup in the, in, the, in, the psycho in the mental health or physical health practices. So, when these people are available, they can go and consult these people, this is they are what they are actually providing, maybe what we found that they may not be able to treat the problem. 
whatever physical or mental health problem they have, but they are able to give this assurance and hope to these people that things will be all right and maybe their well being will be restored. And which is very critical for the purpose of recovery from any kind of social or mental health problem. So, that role they are playing and because of their the kind of role they are playing in many countries which we have seen in the Indonesia, I have seen it in Sri Lanka, Thailand, other countries. What they have done is that they have tried to bring them together the medical doctor and the uh, these uh, traditional healers. Because uh, medical doctor can take care of the physical symptoms and uh, the, the healer can take up the uh, all, all kind of psychosocial problems which are cons which are as accompanying that kind of uh, physical problem. So, what they do in the case in many cases this we see in Sri Lanka particularly that the person may go to a healer first and these healers are given some kind of training also that which kind of problem they should be looking at which kind of problem they should not be looking at. If a serious problem is a cancer or kind of a other kind of very serious problem then they should immediately refer the person to uh, a, a, a specialist. So, their role becomes a kind of a referral providing the first level contact and first level mental health services. And I think this kind of model which they have followed in Indonesia and Sri Lanka at least I have seen that that is maybe a kind of a model which we can think of that how these two kind of streams the traditional and the modern we need both can be combined together to provide a more effective and larger services to the society and the community.